African. So you've got real jungle fever. <laughs> he really does. He likes no, all the is, flavors. Yeah, no, it is. I've been with, and I've hooked up, and I've dated black girls, mixed <laughs> girls, Asian girls. But it just so happened that the relationships were just with white girls. Why? But why though? Why? It was. Do you know what it was? Where I grew up, yeah. <laughs> I grew up in a predominantly white area. Yeah. Like my form was predominantly white. My university was predominantly like white. So. And at that age, like, that's what, you know, around, uh, surrounded by. Obviously, I still found black girls attractive. Still found but then why girls. didn't it help those black girls? I'll it was honest, not one that you were be, like... I'll be completely honest, yeah. I, you know, when you want someone, when you're young, yeah, <laughs> and you don't want the, the girl, like, challenging <laughs> you as much. Eh? <laughs> Oh, Tanyak is with jokes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Why did it take Shaq so long to say what he really wanted to say? <laughs> oh my days. That was so funny. I'm sorry, guys. That was actually funny. Eh? <laughs> I, mean, I was not expecting that. Wow. Big up yourself. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and clicking on this video. It's the latest on trend with your girl, Biami. The first episode of Calculated Couples is out. Mm -mm -mm. I'm going to do my reaction. There's a lot to... Oh, there's a lot to talk about. It's currently on the social breakout on YouTube if you guys want to watch it. I would recommend you go and watch it because then you'll know what I'm talking about because, yeah, I'm just going to, you know, sit down and do my little voiceover. So make sure you guys grab a drink, a cup of tea so we can sip away, get comfortable because, yeah, there's a lot to break down. But I we'll see how we get on because, you know, I can, I can, like go on you know i can really talk but let's first of all take talk about the setup i suppose given that these are real couples i feel like the setting would have benefited more from being filmed in a natural environment if that makes sense so i personally feel like this studio setting lacked character i feel like it lacked vibrance i feel like it lacked personalization i don't know like i feel like it would have lifted the show a little bit more if it had implemented some natural aesthetics or being in a natural environment if there was an opportunity to do so because for example not everybody would want you to come into the home and film i don't know if i'm making sense but i'm talking more from a creative perspective more of a production perspective these relationship couples they're all different like and they all have like phenomenal backgrounds and and stories to share and boxing that in a studio doesn't do it justice it constrains it too much and personally for me i feel like that has restricted engagement for me i got really hooked in i think it was from solomon no is it solomon what's the couple that was uh miles miles and i don't sorry i don't know his girl's name from when it got to miles that's when i engaged more but even when it got to the conversation with miles and his wife that was a different kind of conversation and that alone requires like its own time i feel like the conversation was deep the conversation was political the conversation was engaging the conversation was historic there was so much depth to the conversation uh, it wasn't just about, you know, tell us about your relationship. It's the background, the individual backgrounds, the fact that they come from different worlds. They said a lot of things that were quite key and it was debatable. So I think merging it with the other couples, I don't know, it just seemed a bit like it was a lot to take in. Like it was a lot to take in. I think they showed all of the couples and I feel like that was quite a lot as well. It was a lot to like take in. I thought it was going to be okay. Let's say two couples in episode one. And then they bring in another couple. And they bring in. But to break it up and show all the couples. It just. It was hard to engage and connect with them. That's where I kind of felt like. Okay. Mm, let's. Let me. Let me hear a little bit more. Like you kind of leave feeling like. 
I don't know how I felt about it. I just need to watch it a little bit more to see if I really, really like it or if it's just like, mm, it's all right, you know, type of vibe. Let's so let's talk about Shaq and Tanya since that's where it started. Oh, actually, before we get into that, what I really liked actually was this part when Paul was doing a voiceover, the popping of the comments. I thought that was really good. Like embedding that in the video was was really good. That engaged my mind for some reason. All of these things like really make a difference when creating content, especially because it's a type of content that is you literally just sit down in the studio. There's not really much to look at. There's there's not much of an environment and it's just two people and voices if these people are not engaging they're not pulling in the viewers with what they're saying and it's very monotone it can get boring quite quickly so I feel like him starting off the way he started was quite good it was like oh okay what's this like what's this about what are these comments so that was really good with Shaq and Tanya I mean, obviously we know them from Love Island. We've got an insight into their background and their relationship. So what I liked is the fact that they spoke about their relationship outside. What I liked is how Paul navigated the conversation with this particular relationship. It wasn't like, you know, tell me about your past. Or, sorry, tell me about how you met the... We know how they met. To get <laughs> it was, okay, tell me about your relationships individually. So that was really good to understand how they operated and you know Tanya being Tanya saying crazy things she's cheating not knowing that her ex had cheated but then it was just like girl he cheated first but I didn't know then I cheated then found out that he's been cheating that's a whole conversation that I'm waiting to hear about so it was really interesting to understand their their background I don't know if it was just me but although these are real couples it didn't feel like they were real couples. It felt like it was scripted. I don't know if you guys listen properly, but in the beginning when Paul was had, when he was doing his intro, he said, um, he made a comment about back in his days, city girls were girls who worked in a city and now city girls are girls who don't work at all or something like that, I might have um, paraphrased. So when Tanya and Shaq may, had their time, I think it was Tanya, she said something about, I don't know what it's like back in your days. And, you know, obviously the blogs picked that up and that clip, you know, was going viral. And people were talking about that, like not her talking to him like as an uncle. But this is the same language that Paul used in the beginning of the video. And so when I tied in the two, I was like, mm, is it a coincidence or was that done tactically you know was is there a little bit of scripting is there a little bit of like okay i know what he's kind of saying so let's play into something like a little bit or was this raw natural conversation and the vibe that i'm getting and i might be wrong is that there is a little bit of direction in terms of the wordplay and the scripting scripting is a bit of a Sorry, scripting is a little bit of a heavy word, but I feel like there was a little bit of word manipulation in terms of um, how can we get this more engaging? Let's say punchy things. Let's try and be, you know, um, comical or I don't know. I feel like there's definitely been some kind of word manipulation or direction. I don't know if it's raw conversation or it's directive conversation is what I'm basically saying because it was like, what a coincidence he says something about back in my days and then Tanya says I don't know what it's like back in your days I mean what is what's the age difference so I don't I don't know the age but like uh, you are talking like he's your uncle like you are 10 years old and he's like 50 or something it's not even the case like I'm sure Paul is not that old. I don't know how old he is but I'm sure he's not that old like compared to Tanya and Shaq so yeah, I don't know about that. Um, and it was same with the with the next couple, the the pastors from Shaq to the pastors. Um, I was disengaged. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know what it is, but something about those conversations just didn't seem real. I couldn't take their conversation seriously. It just they obviously are a real couple, but you know when you're watching something and when something is really good it's like you literally you don't even want to 
you don't want to you don't even want to go to the toilet in case you miss out on something like you obviously it's on youtube so you can pause it but like you just like no like what 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 i wasn't getting that i wasn't getting that vibe i wasn't getting like oh, what it oh hi oh my god i wasn't getting any of that i was just like sorry what you, so i need to rewind because i missed what he's saying what are we talking about again like that's the vibe that i was getting it was just i don't know like it's just over the top and it was just too much and with that pastor like he was doing a lot of wordplay is it because that viral clip he was saying what did he say he said something like if you chase if if you chase the connector you miss the connection or something something like that so then in this sitting down therapy thing he's doing he's doing the same thing like he's still doing the same kind of wordplay and i'm like it, like are you now doing this like on purpose like because i don't i don't find it funny i don't know if he's trying to come across as a comedian i just didn't understand it i, I couldn't connect to them i feel like it was too dramatical like it was just too like i don't know it was just not serious i'm gonna leave it as that because i don't really i don't really like to comment too much on on pastors but it just didn't feel like real like it was just kind of like okay what's the next couple the next couple is um, Miles and his wife. This is when I started to engage. With, this is when I started to find it, the conversations a lot more interesting. Basically, he was in prison. When she was talking about how you can find peace in the ghetto, at that point, I literally thought okay like you're now you've come into your husband's rescue kind of thing it's like you're trying to come into his rescue and try to justify i get where she was kind of coming from but i think that is not entirely correct if people could find peace in the ghetto then why would people try to come out do you get what i mean like that's not a place that you can find peace i think peace is the wrong word to use i think you can separate yourself from that environment put your head down and work towards coming out and that means that you find a level of mental strength to do that because that's what it would take it would take a lot of mental um strength to um separate yourself from an environment that you've been so used to that you've been so conditioned to and that takes a lot of mental strength now to find to find peace means that you can find you can be content in that place you know you can be okay to be in that place it's, it's it's never the case like i've never heard stories of people being like you know i've got peace in the ghetto like no there's no peace in that environment but there is a, there, there is the ability to find mental strength and capacity to be rest assured that there is a way out and this is what he was saying that even when he was in prison like people think that it's so chaotic like it's so this like you can't actually you know breathe but what he's saying is that no like you can actually separate yourself from that environment put your head down and actually start to do the work personally internally and that's not about peace that's about mental strength and mental capacity because sometimes chaos can come to obstruct that chaos can come to make you believe that you don't have sanity what i'm translating that piece to be is sanity like you can actually find and have and maintain your sanity even whilst you're in prison and that's why i was hearing sort of where miles was coming from but i get it you know she was coming to her man's rescue because you know it was a little bit hard to they were stumbling he was stumbling a little bit when he was talking about that because you know he clearly don't want to talk about that part of his life because we don't know what happened to his mum. but from when he said to paul when paul said oh sorry uh, about that he was like no you don't have to be unless you did it or something i was like oh you know maybe that's an area that is a bit too deep again for like what i was saying in the beginning they've got so much depth to their story i just don't think that this um this setting and actually combining their their um their session with all of these other couples worked because it kind of drowns their stories like you don't really get to connect with their stories as much because everything is just collided it was just too much but um but yeah and you know and he was saying a lot of things like you know i liked what he said about we are 
um, we are people of the earth and not of the ends you know because what Paul was trying to say is that why does when people get big they forget about the ends and I liked how he pull it together you know this is just a passing of our life it's part of our journey it doesn't it's not who we are it doesn't define who we are it's part of what we've been through we shouldn't be stuck there we shouldn't have to we shouldn't think that you know this is a part of me it's a part of what I've been through and it's not a part of me and we are a part of you know we are a people of the earth you know there is so much more to us you know there is so much more but it doesn't mean that you can't go back to pull people out if you've got the key to something then you've got the ability to pull people out you know and release people and declare that freedom and declare that deliverance back in those ends you know where you where you was once a captive in that place not thinking that you was ever going to come out like a lot of young people and a lot of people are in the ends but if you've managed to come out and you know you've managed to to do it effectively then what's wrong with going back why not go back and actually try and pull people out of there so that conversation was really really good and and but it was cut like then it was moved on to the next couple obviously i'm a beautiful woman why would you say that with this particular couple it was interesting because i don't actually know much about solomon so it was interesting that he is following and you know that came up the only thing that I was really looking at is their body language. The way that he was grabbing her arm. And I don't know if it was just me. I don't know if it was just me. But I just was feeling a bit tense and uncomfortable. And I was just like, okay, you can just let her go a little bit. It was almost like what she was saying. I was looking at him like thinking, girl, you better say the right thing. That's just the vibe that I was getting. And I'm going to leave it at that. I don't know much about him, but I'm going to leave it at that. So, um, so yeah, it's going to be quite interesting to see them a lot more. I felt like it was a lot, it, out of all the couples, it was a bit intense. Like, I, f I was feeling the tension. I was just like, oh, you better say the right thing. Because the way he's grabbing you was like, <sighs> the, the, the energies together was just like, ding 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 you know it was a lot it was a lot but i liked the fact that he started talking about him being he used to be a feminist and why he was a feminist and i like that conversation because most of the time it's always women that are feminists you don't really hear much men um who are feminists talk so that was really interesting and I liked how he differentiated feminism and gender equality because that's really, really important because a lot of people think that if you believe in gender equality, then you're a feminist and that's not the case. I'm a little bit conscious about when people are on podcasts and they are on certain platforms and they represent Christ or they bring Christianity into conversations because people don't read their Bible they will take what you say as gospel so if you have somebody who is a representative of Christ or who declares themselves as Christian and they misrepresent Christ or they misrepresent the word or they misinterpret people will run with that Miss Cameroon and her bae what can we say oh that rhymes miss cameroon and her bae uh uh what can we say sorry distracting and this is an interesting couple i think a lot of people um already know about their background and their relationship so it's actually good that they talking about it actually like even in depth as well because yeah it just brings things to light it's just like dang girl you only knew this man for like a couple of months and you took him into your house and again when they say things like when you know that somebody when you've got a woman that would take you in just you know after just getting to know you you know you've got a real one those are I feel like are quite dangerous messages to put out just because that happened to you and your relationship end up working out it doesn't mean that that's going to be good for somebody else to do and the reason why I say that is because you will only be able to carry what you can handle. You will not be given more than you cannot handle. And clearly you was able to handle this. That's why your relationship is where it is today. You've gone through so much. Somebody else that went through it wouldn't have been able to, you know, carry it through. 
and we don't know you know where you have gotten this love or this grace or you know this kindness to literally take this man in but not everybody will be able to have that grace not everybody will be able to have that measure of love or grace or kindness so it's important that people highlight that you need to make sure that you do what is right for you because not all relationship fits all it's not one shoe fits all and so when people put out certain messages or rhetorics it's important to emphasize that you have to make sure that it works for you because it's not every guy that's going to have a genuine heart for you for example he was caught for um possession or su suspicion possession sorry i don't know what the thing is. i don't remember what the wording is but something to do with uh, with drugs right mm -hmm. now what if there's plenty of stories where girls have actually been put in these situations where the guy didn't even love them the guy didn't love them they used them she's lucky that she found a guy that was genuine and god had a plan for this man you know there is there is a he's a whole he has a whole journey and them happen to have known each other from even before this encounter remember that ladies and gentlemen okay this is not somebody that they just met out and one month the guy gets arrested and you invite him into the house no they knew of each other either they knew each other or they knew of each other from way before but they never really spoke like that there was a rapport there there was a a knowing there there was a level of familiarity there this one is different okay this one is different and it's the same with the miles couple you know not everybody will be able to deal with a bad boy okay so it's great that his wife didn't give up on him and she didn't listen to people saying oh he's a bad boy don't listen to him don't follow him that's fantastic but you need wisdom you need wisdom wisdom is the principal thing wisdom will tell you what to do when you don't know what to do if you are foolish and in love or you're infatuated then you can get yourself in a very strict um tricky and sticky situation it was good like it was it was interesting like there's definitely a lot to unravel with these couples There's a lot of in-depth storylines i'm looking forward to the next conversation to hear more um particularly with solomon and miles and i guess yeah miss cameroonian i don't i'm not sure uh, shack and um the pastors i still need to connect with them like i just kind of feel like i couldn't connect with them personally but let me know what you guys thought like who was your favorite couple what did you think of the show are you gonna keep watching it uh do you want me to keep doing more reactions like hello and if you haven't subscribed then please 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 i would really really appreciate it if you just click on that subscribe button because it would really help me to keep pushing out content it'll be nice to know that you guys are supporting me you know because yeah we all need a little bit of support but guys i'll speak to you guys in my next video don't forget to hit your notification bell so that you guys are notified whenever i oh, 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 oh.